My name is Morgan Levy and I'm a neuropsychiatrist who specializes in brain behavior relationships. This is an educational mini-series about how and why our species, that is Homo sapiens sapiens, does religious behavior. Now, I define religious behavior as all behavior in which we band together in small groups, share a common belief system, nurture and protect the in-group while treating the out-group with some hostility. This series begins with an eight-minute comprehensive introduction, followed by a series of three-minute vignettes designed to answer a representative group of questions that were asked to the initial test audience. Now, I speak from sort of a cognitive, anthropological viewpoint, and I intend no positive or negative evaluation of any particular belief system. There's simply no value judgment here. I hope that you will enjoy these videos and it will stimulate you to ask questions and to discuss this material. The human species does do religion. Most people believe in a slightly counterintuitive, invisible being and a set of rules on how to get along. Why is that? Oh, come on. Animals aren't programmed to do certain predictable behaviors, are they? So we have a scarlet macaw named Nikki. Nikki has a little bitty brain that was programmed in the Amazon rainforest for the purpose of picking nuts and berries off trees and bushes. However, we have Nikki in my bedroom in Denver, Colorado. So we give Nikki toys made out of wood and leather. She plays with these toys and she's able to exercise her innate brain programming. And she's perfectly happy and perfectly healthy. So this is our big beautiful scarlet macaw Nikki, and you can see how healthy she is because she gets to play with lots of toys. On the other hand, here is a poor scarlet macaw who doesn't get to play with toys. This scarlet macaw is very unhappy and very unhealthy and even plucks its own feathers out. Well I hope this analogy isn't too harsh, but here's a Roman Catholic playing with a rosary. The Turkish people call it a misbaha, or in Hindu, it's japa mala. Anyways, you get the point. Okay, forget for a moment that we made up a whole bunch of silly stories about god kings. I'll get back to that. The thing is, genetically, we are an unusually homogeneous species that evolved the ability to network our brains as a survival strategy. Religion is fundamentally about strengthening that network. It is about being social. It's about teamwork. When we do things like singing, chanting, dancing, touching, dressing alike, lighting candles, burning incense, and doing rhythmic behavior in unison, we stimulate the release of regulatory neurotransmitters in our brains, such as serotonin, dopamine, adrenaline, acetylcholine, and endorphins, and oxytocin from subcortical nuclei that are connected in a feedback loop to the newly evolved prefrontal cortex where social behavior is coordinated. The reason that our social programming looks so funny now is that it evolved when we lived out on the savannah in small groups of hunters and gatherers, but it is now being used in large agrarian societies where there are kings and priests and rules about how to get along. The really cool part is that now we have the technology that we can actually see inside the brain. We can actually see how it is functioning when information is being processed. We can actually see which circuits are linked together and networking with other brains and other humans. For example, 
Prayer is a meditation exercise in which you focus your attention on communication with an invisible being that is outside of your body. I am suggesting that all meditation, including prayer, is a mechanism by which you communicate with your own subconscious brain. When you talk to that part of your brain that is outside of your conscious awareness, it seems like you are talking to another person. Functional imaging would seem to support this notion as images taken when you are thinking about God are identical to images taken when you are thinking about yourself and different from images taken when you are thinking about other human beings. Now, let's actually look inside a brain and see what's happening when experienced me uh, meditators are meditating. Here is a baseline image next to an image of a meditating brain. These are courtesy of Andrew Newberg, who is an internist that specializes in functional brain imaging. In this first image, you can see the frontal lobe. Notice the increase in redness that indicates increased activity. The frontal lobe is where attention is focused in your brain. Now, the second image, you can see the parietal lobe, or the back part of the brain. Notice the decrease in activity. The parietal lobe is where spatial orientation is coordinated. Okay, let's actually look inside the brain and see where the circuits are that do religion. That is, the circuits that do social behavior. First of all, here is a brain. And if I look at the outside, you can see the frontal part, posterior part, with a parietal lobe being here. If I break it apart and we look on the inside, this is your prefrontal cortex. But this center area are where the subcortical nuclei are located. This is where things like norepinephrine and serotonin get projected to the frontal lobe. Now, this is a circuit that goes to the frontal lobe and comes back from the frontal lobe. The circuit is a feedback loop mechanism by which we do social behavior. Now consider these three points about how our brains are organized. First, our brains are pre-programmed. These programs are not good at critical thinking, but they are good at rationalizing things that are observed. Number two. We have the unique and recently evolved ability to synthesize auditory, visual, olfactory, tactile, gustatory input, and these relatively young synthesizing circuits can be fooled. Number three, if we are going to organize it as a team to deal with things like thunder, rain, drought, volcanoes, eclipses, and stuff like that, then we need to all agree on causal explanations for these random events. So, here are some Taoist priests in the, in the city god temple of Shanghai performing rituals. Now think about this. Our senses misperceive something or a random event occurs and our brains rationalize it collectively. This is done within the context of innate programming that is designed to do social bonding, which includes thinking and behaving in unison. In regards to the silly stories, it seems as though there were some geniuses among us who created a bunch of pseudo-logical mumbo-jumbo to heap onto the innate way we were doing religious behavior. Thus, and here is the really big conclusion, most modern religions are complex rationalizations that use a causal agent, for example a god, modeled after a king to explain why we feel good when we exercise our innate social programming.